Welcome back everyone. Day two of SuperCloud 4. It's our second day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. In studio here in Palo Alto, this is theCUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Rob Strecce with CUBE Research. Uh, guys, day two, we've got another packed schedule. What a payload of, of SuperCloud 4 content. The theme is generative AI, as you guys know. We do this every quarter, folks watching. Every quarter we have an episode we unpack and drop a payload of content from experts, startups, founders, industry experts, pe people from the community, all weighing in on the hottest trends, the most important stories. Dave, I mean, great day two. And, and the earnings season for the hyperscalers is kicking in. You saw Alphabet, we saw Google Cloud, we got Amazon coming up, you saw Microsoft numbers. Um, kind of a interesting time. We obviously got the war in Israel, uh, which is kind of putting a really kind of a, a wet blanket on some of the tech scene, uh, certainly on the startups and the Israeli component of uh, yeah. also the tech scene here. So uh, weird market, are we in a recession? What's the cloud outlook look like? Generative AI has got all the hype. Is the bloom off the rose or is it still hyping? I mean, this is the big conversation we've been having and, and it seems to me that you know, from yesterday, it seems like it is like a web moment where people are like so enthusiastic. Confidence levels, I'd say 50-50 around you know, where we are and how we should kind of pointed that out. Um, what's the lineup look like for today and what's your analysis of the current market? Well, first of all, I'd say it's kind of playing out how we thought it would play out. Uh, Microsoft is winning. Its relationship with OpenAI has clearly put it in the in the front. I, we say it cut the line, and now it's in the lead with with AI. You know, you know, Jassy's talking about how it's early innings. It's just a, you know first three steps in a marathon. But the interesting thing is, when has Amazon not led? Right, Amazon's always been a front runner here. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic. And Google, who's got the best AI, you would think with BigQuery and Vertex AI, it would have a little bit of a tailwind from that, but it's quarter you know, suggested not the case with GCP. They were talking about cloud optimization. Azure, unbelievable. Azure's actual constant currency growth was 28%. I had it at 27%, and I'm usually a little higher on, on Azure. And then GCP came in, the overall cloud came in at 22%. My guess on GCP, I had GCP coming in at 25%. I'm just squinting through the data and the transcripts. It maybe grew a little bit faster than their overall cloud, but not much. They talked about optimization. So clearly there hasn't been a huge tailwind for these cloud guys yet of, because of AI, with the possible except, exception a little bit for Microsoft. Rob, what's your take on, the, on, this, on this cloud game as well? Generative AI obviously is hot, it's hyped. What's Where's the rubber meeting the road? Where's the meat on the bone, as we always say? Yeah. What's, what, how do you see this? Yeah, I, I think, to Dave's point, I think uh, OpenAI has been able to really help Microsoft jump the line and get people in because they can use that as a way to quickly get to chatbots and things of that nature and build out first prototypes or proof of concept type AI and generative AI products. And I think that has helped them and I think when people looked at Vertex, it's pretty, it's newer from that perspective. And I think it's not as hyped. And I think the models behind it, I think we're still, you know, to use Andy's terms, early innings on that, because I think a lot of the open models, I think you have Watson X coming in, you have a number of different walled gardens that are still yet to be built for people to secure their data protect their intellectual property. And I think that's going to have a big impact on clouds. Watson X might be the diamond in the rough here. We're actually seeing momentum for Watson X after all the years of pain that we had to endure listening about Watson and it not performing in the market. It actually looks like Watson X has some really great potential and some momentum behind it. Yeah, I mean, IBM could <clears throat> get a mulligan here with Watson that kind of failed to meet up to his expectations uh, over the years. Uh, with NLP, but now with the AI coming in, they're kind of maybe in a pole position. We got to keep an eye on that. Uh, certainly, Dave, love to get you guys' perspective on and, that. And the other thing I had, open AI is actually starting to see some competition. As, as high as they are, they entered the market, like really came in fast, but they've come down a little bit because they've got competition, right? Yeah. There's, a, there's alternatives out there. There's third parties that are open source. You say open AI, AI isn't closed. You've been, you said that a lot yesterday. I, I, I didn't really understand okay, why so, you say that. Well, Explain that. Well, okay, well, why don't we get to the Amazon? We'll come back to Amazon, but on your question, um, when the models started coming out, they were called proprietary models because right. they're proprietary to open AI, but they're actually crawling the web and getting oh. data that's open. <laughs> so, um, and as you go down to the power law, we have the slide, hooked up the power law slide, we have that still, love going to the slide that's there. So the power law, as we've been promoting uh, through our CUBE research uh, initiative, um, you see 
as these specialty models come in, all the talk at SuperCloud 4 and Generate AI is the data is your intellectual property. That's proprietary to the company. Yep. So words are, semantics are, the words are getting flipped upside down. Memory, is it memory? Is it memory for the reg or the retrieval? Is it proprietary? Is it open, walled garden? So what you see in the trend line is on the specialty uh, power law, those sets are going to be smaller, but high fidelity data. And that's going to be valuable. So it's interesting, the proprietary at the top of the head of the tail, is open AI, so technically it's open, and then they have open in the name, but they were called proprietary because they didn't really share the data other than querying through the API. So it's like, it's, it's just, the industry is in a weird tide moment, Dave. The tide's shifting, it's kind of mid-tide right now, and I think that the AI wave coming in is going to completely change the semantics of the definitions of how data is organized, and I said that yesterday. And so, and this is why I think Amazon's flat-footed, because Amazon's playbook is cloud-based. And you brought up the Azure success and how OpenAI kind of cut the line, or as we say in the NASCAR, you know, slingshot to the front. Yeah. And, and I think Amazon's mistake was their, their I think they got a little bit cocky. They, 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 are, they are conservative with, with the trends. They'd like to see things develop before they make their move. But OpenAI was such a strong move, they were so flat-footed. And then their response from a PR perspective and their analyst relations perspective was, anemic, right. and then if you look at what they're doing now, I see Jassy posting about the Today Show, their entire PR strategy is focusing on mainstream press. I don't get why they're doing that when all the action's in the industry. Right. So it's like, they're, it's almost as if they got the wrong playbook on comms. Well, I think what are they trying to convince on the Today Show? That I was going to say, what is somebody going to go out from the Today Show and go and, you know, my, my mother is not going to go use something from Amazon. Your developer to, mom? To, yeah, my developer <laughs> mom is not going to go out and use. If anything, it's she worse. She can use it. chat GPT. She can't use, you know, anything from yeah. Amazon for this. And I, I think that's, that's, that is, and we talked about this when we were at Google Next, is we look at it, Google really has pervasiveness with Vertex. And I think that really has helped it how it goes through a lot of their services and helps across many different services. Amazon, just based on how the stack is built of the services and how independent all 300 services are, so they can do the two pizza teams and they can go fast, really is going to be a tough thing for them to go and build into that. Even just co-pilots yeah. is going to be tough for them to build into these and integrate into these services just based on how they're built. But, but Microsoft's think, running the table on integrating across the product line, Office 365 <laughs> and the co-pilot. I mean, Microsoft's got the formula down. And the other thing about Microsoft, and one of the guests yesterday I was talking to him offline, the, I forget his name. The, VJ. Uh, VJ from, uh, from Howie Shoes panel. He was saying they made a bet years ago not to scrape email, to keep fairly double down on privacy. And he said, that hurt us for a while because we had all this data that we could have scraped, but we didn't. We said, no, we're going to be true to privacy. And I mean, it sounds, you know, very self-serving now, you know, kind of Apple, same thing, but I think it's true. Whereas Google, you're typing your email and it's, it's finishing the email for you, suggesting replies. So Google's scanning your emails. Now, I don't think Google's, I kind of trust Google, but maybe I shouldn't. But what do you think Amazon should do then? Do you think Amazon's taking the wrong approach on comms? You think that they're messaging to the wrong audience? I mean, I think, you know, the Today Show and these kinds of outlets are more like, could do more harm to Amazon because it's going to scare people. Like, what, what, Amazon's too powerful. What Amazon's always done well, and, and I, I got to believe it's going to do this at reInvent, is it shows proof points. It shows products and it shows customers that are using them. It tr trots them up on stage and it convinces people that this stuff actually works and it's the best out there and we're the fastest, <clears throat> we're trusted. We got to see that. And you know, yeah. I, I've talked to people inside of Amazon, they're still not using their own bedrock. They're like, yeah, we're still testing it out. And you know, the components in bedrock and Titan, it's, we're still not there yet. Yeah, we're using SageMaker, but yeah. so it, it feels like it's just not ready. I think to that, I think you're, dead on with where reInvent's going to land in you know, about a, a little over a month from now, right? Yeah. Is that they're going to have proof points, of, but they're going to double down on their community, which is the builder community. That's where they've gotten that real momentum always is from people building. And I think yeah. what has happened is people aren't building the complex, huge language model, chat GPT style stuff. They're doing these SLMs, the segmented yeah. language models and those small ones. Yeah. And I think, you know, on the longer tail. So I think they're playing for the long tail yeah. 
They're not playing for the front end, and I think that's their strategy. I think it's going to hurt them in the, you know, in the run-up to getting to the tail. But, again, if they play it right, they still have a really good play in there as a platform. I think, I think Amazon, I mean, we'll, we'll get into the research in a second, but I want to just say that Amazon should go to their true north star, and that is the IaaS. They have to address the cost issue and performance. They nail that right now. That's what I would be saying to Jassy and team and Adam. Nail the silicon, nail the performance. Let the data sets, whether it's in Bedrock or SageMaker, sit in there as an app enabler. Right. So the question that I'm looking at for reInvent, and I'd love to get your perspective guys, is what's the apps look like? Okay, because there's a lot of talk about them having solutions, um, yeah, we, the call center, they trot that out all the time. It's contact center, whatever they've got, got going on there. But what are the apps going to look like? What are those AI apps going to look like? What, in, in Gen 1 cloud, it was SaaS. That was well understood. You post it on EC2, that's three. I mean. You do a SaaS app. What's the AI app look I like? I mean, again, Microsoft has the strategy down. I mean, they've nailed it. They've, they're saying, hey, we have the apps. We're going to layer AI on top of that. Boom, they've got a captive market and they're going to do really, really well, I think. It's, they got to go back to their roots. It's the developers because Amazon doesn't have that up the stack, you know, you know the, the software portfolio. They rely on developers to go build that stuff and compete as SaaS companies. And so they've got to get back to the core. By the way, when you look at the data and you talk to customers about their intent to use Amazon, they definitely want to use Amazon. Amazon's well positioned. They've got to execute, they've got to deliver, and they've got to show at reInvent that people actually are using this stuff. And then I think they'll do great. Rob, well, I'm interested in what Swami's going to say, but we heard, yeah. we heard uh, Bratton say yesterday on the keynote from Amazon, it's not about the models, it's the end-to-end. -end. Reaction to that, what's your, what's your yeah, thoughts? I, mean, I think, you know, again, they're going to look at how do they bring it to SageMaker, how do they bring, you know, more advancements. Because SageMaker, even with Canvas, was still fairly clunky and convoluted. I think the pricing thing is definitely an issue. They're always about how do we lower the cost yeah and build out apps. I think when you start to look at BI, and you know, I mean, that's Adams, mm -hmm. you know, from his Tableau history and heritage coming back, I would not be shocked to see some advancements with the AI that they've already announced within that product line. Yeah. And I think that when you start to look at that end to end, like you're saying, they do have a little bit of a stack on, on that, but it is the developers. Yeah. They, gotta, they gotta make the tooling that much easier. So it's I a picks and shovels market, isn't it? It's, it is, and we're going to hear, I think, a lot of co-pilot-ish type stuff for building your bedrock applications with example use cases. And I think that's what they're going to focus but, on. But I do think Amazon has to do a better job of integrating its data estate, right? It's still got a very bespoke data estate. When you look at what, what BigQuery's doing with Vertex, AI, what, what, what Microsoft's doing with Fabric, with Snowflake, Databricks, they have a much stronger, in my opinion, integration story. Uh, Amazon's starting to get there, but they're kind of gluing things together, but it's still, that to me is critical because then it makes it easier to layer AI on top as opposed to have to munge your data. Well, well quite literally, <laughs> right? Yeah, so quite I mean, literally called glue, But yeah. I, I think to, to that point, that actually may or may not be a disadvantage for them. You think they can leverage that? I think they can yeah. leverage that, especially where you have Databricks is so huge within Amazon and you have other, other estates there and they have so much data. Okay. And they benefit from those other partners. I mean, they've, they've, Guys. Amazon has nailed the partner and the go-to-market. They're they, they blowing they, Google away. On they that. got ecosystem, yes. no doubt about it, because yeah. they, they don't really compete with them much at all. Right. Um, I got to ask you guys the question we asked yesterday to the, all the experts, and I want to get your reaction um, to, the, to the question. So we talked about the, the step-up function of AI, how we, Shu brought that up in his panel. We mentioned it to the other founders. Before the, the cloud, you had to provision a data center, put a box in there if you were a startup. Cloud came in, startup said, oh, I don't have to pay for those boxes, I can use my credit card and, and start a company. We, we know all the history of the web 2.0 and beyond was cloud-based. So it was clear value between paying for machines, the tax of starting up a company versus the cloud, cloud won and was great. What is the step function value of AI in the cloud now? So, you know, take, take the progression. Data center, cloud minimizes that for the startup. What's that benefit that the cloud with AI brings to the startup, that's going to be that step function, that's going to differentiate which cloud. Now remember, Amazon was kind of the only cloud at the time, so it was obvious you go to Amazon, yeah. the only game in town. 
Now with the competition, you got Azure, Google, Amazon, and maybe even Oracle in the mix there. The startups now have choice. What's the step function value that makes that decision? So with cloud, it was time to value, right? I mean, it wasn't so much about TCO. Maybe it was, maybe we can argue that, but it was really about agility and time to value. It became so compelling to get stuff done quickly. That was the cloud value proposition. The value proposition of AI is cutting labor costs. I mean, that's, that's it. That's where the step function is going to come in. I can cut headcount or I can reduce the need to hire people and that's going to drop, that's going to increase productivity and drop right down to the bottom line of the income. And specialized system. talent too. Yeah. I don't need PhDs to run. But I'll, I'll, I'll take that and say, okay, back to the you know, startup question, right? I think what you're seeing is expectations out of the venture community for five to six customers out of the gate to go get your seed funding and things of that nature. And what it's helping people do or not is build that first, you know, alpha beta product out of the gate without having to have the massive team. So to your point about labor costs and things of that nature, when you start to look at it, it's augmented. It's how do I get to that first, you know, that minimally lovable product out of the gate. Awesome. I know we got to go, but we should probably set up day two. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, well, I want to spend the last minute um, just taking a quick public service announcement. We SiliconANGLE, the Cube, and Wikibon has been on the three brands. We have the new Cube Research that's going to replace Wikibon. I want you guys to explain the last minute we have here. What is the Cube Research? Rob, you're working on that. Dave, what is the Cube Research? What are we bringing to customers and what are we following? Yeah, I mean, we're adding to our capabilities, which we have the Cube, the Cube community, the, the insights that we get from the Cube, we have a partnership with our data partner, ETR, and we're layering value on top of that to help people. We got research, we've got advisory, we, we do private consulting, we help them get the word out with the Cube. We're combining those in what is essentially the, the industry's best service to take data, data-driven insights and broadcast to the world. Rob, we've been facing this quite, we haven't really launched it, but what's your uh, experience? What are we offering? What are you talking to customers about? Yeah, I, I think a lot of, it's meeting the customers and providing them value. I think typically in advisory services, you would get you know, a subscription or an annual contract and it's like, hey, we say nice things about you. What we're focused on is really ROI to those customers and helping them build their go-to-markets, help them get the word out and helping them understand how they're competing within those markets. And I think the fact is we see so much of that signal and it's yeah. mixed up with the noise and it's extracting that as yeah. you guys would always say. And yeah. how do you help them understand this is where you position yourself and do it in an honest, in way that has integrity as well. I think that's And we got the technology, we got the video technology, the video data lake, the AI coming out, yep. combining the technology, the research and the video. I'm looking forward to hearing more news about the research. Yep. All right, day two, setting it up. We got a great lineup of experts. SuperCloud 4, day two, so much coverage being dropped in these, in these two days on Generative AI, so much there. Uh, share it with your friends, check it out, consume the content. It's going to be a great community site. Kicking off day two starts right now.